Hello, everyone. Attack Power here with Game 2 between Espresso and Inshaw in the August Monthly Tournament. Let's dive right in here to Orsha East. And on the left, in the red, we have Inshaw playing CIA BG on Maverick Income. And on the right, in the blue, we have Espresso playing Untenem and Russellsprung on Vanguard Income. Remember, this is a random division match uh, tournament this month, so I guess Incha's just getting Commonwealth lucky today, and Espresso's not getting so lucky. But let's dive into the deck here. CIABG, solid, very high A tier, potentially even S tier, dep uh, depending on who's using it. Uh, doesn't have any significant weaknesses other than a few small things here and there. But the Recon tab, lots of armor to help supplement your already massive armor tab, along with a really good CQC infantry unit to buff up your somewhat weak infantry tab. Your infantry tab, in terms of quality, it has none, except for the Zanista, which is a really good CQC infantry. Well, really good's not a, it's probably an exaggeration. It's a solid CQC infantry. Otherwise, though, it's all junk infantry motostrelsi are an average infantry unit otherwise just junk infantry but you get so many of these 100 infantry with just six slots uh continue on the tank tab of course the highlight of the division tons and tons of cromwells tons of churchills you get cromwell sevens which have the 120 millimeter of armor lots and lots of leaders here incha does love his tank leaders excuse me uh he does love his tank leaders that's for sure the most i've ever seen in any division recently uh the uh, support tab phenomenal with lots you technically can get three cards of 2k he support but he's only taking the two chromos which is you know the common one to see um but uh other than that the at tab i mean i guess it's a little lacking but you don't really need it it does have 17 pounds he's not bringing any, not that he needs them in this matchup that would be why uh then your a tab pretty phenomenal with the 94 mil a piece which is a really good heavy a piece you also get the tripoles and the crusader a's which always perform really well your RD tab is phenomenal with tons of heavy artillery that performs quite well your air tab usually can be quite good but he's just bringing in the recon spitfire here on the other side unternem and russell sprung a c slash d tier division uh except for like one or two maps where it can be quite good uh um, Orsha East, I, I don't know if I'd qualify this as one of the maps it's super good on. It's probably not its worst map, but I wouldn't put it in a great map either. Your recon tab is phenomenal. Lots and lots of light armor. You get some great infantry as well. Lots of snipers and stuff with the SS Kabir's Fusilier. I think there's other things in there too he's not bringing. Uh, lots of, like I said, lots of armor cars and stuff as well. Your infantry tab, the whole reason of this division, it's the only reason it's not completely horrible. Um, you have a pretty phenomenal infantry tab. You get these SS Kabir's Jaeger, which are really aggressively costed infantry units your brandenburger pios which have double flamers ss fulcher jaegers just a whole and brandenburgers the whole pile of really good infantry your tank tab is horrendous just really light italian tanks uh your support tab is okay you do get lg 42s and mg 42 so it's not the worst thing ever uh your at tab is okay you do get pack 40s and pack 38s which is really nice uh and the pack 36 is actually really good your a tab a is okay it's it's limited you get flak verlings which which definitely can help your rd tab the 105 uh check weapons are really good so that's not actually bad uh but otherwise not anything magical the air tab also pretty solid uh with the good c205 fighters a lot of ju87 tank busters and tank clusters because you need them because you don't have any other ways to kill tanks but here we go we are off here insha making an aggressive push to capture this early flag here on the other side Nothing aggressive because on top of everything else, this division has horrible transports. And Incha actually giving up the northern flag. That is beyond shocking, actually. This is usually where people fight really hard. But he's just tossing it away. Doesn't care. Okay. Pack 36 does get out. Will it be able to kill these Daimlers is the question. Daimlers are going to get away. But that is in position now. And the SPW 47 mil should be able to push off these Vickers eventually. I mean, it's not a phenomenal HE weapon, but it should do all right. Pack 36, he really wants that not to die. Uh, they're actually pretty key to killing some of this light armor. Brandenburg uh, uh, MG42 does get unloaded. Pack 38 getting into position. Does get into position. Will be able to kill that Cromwell 5 is the question. Should be able to as long as the MG42 doesn't get too much fire on it. Yeah, really interesting play here. I mean, unfortunately for Espresso, he had no way of really pushing his advantage here on the hill at the beginning because his units just aren't fast. Pack 38 just cannot kill that Cromwell 5, which is kind of surprising because it does have 100 millimeters of penetration and there's only 70 millimeters of iron. Now that Pack, Pack 38 goes down, it's actually a pretty big loss right off the bat. He doesn't have that much AT. I mean, he really doesn't. He's got the three cards of AT guns and one of those cards is a Pack 36, which 
while it's good for its cost, is not like a phenomenally good. Here's those SS Kabir's Jaegers really quick. 20 points for this is very good. Uh, it's not a very good infantry unit, but 20 points for that is fa pretty fantastic. SS Folsom Jaegers, I mean, these guys are fantastic. Grenades, two MG34 is fanatical. I mean, these guys are phenomenal. And I think only 30 points? Yeah, only 30 points and not 35. Half track spam again. Not nearly as bad this time, but still there's half tracks. And none of these oh the the uh Kabir Jigger does have an AT grenade, but that that is wishful thinking, most likely. Fusiliers can just they're 15 points, so you can spam them everywhere. Inshaw currently on 13 level. Once again in that Vanguard Maverick matchup. So technically espresso with the advantage here in terms of income to start. Whole pile of SS Kabir Jager. He put both cards in A, so he's got 24 of them here in A phase. He's planning to spam them. This one goes down to the Zanista. Pack 36 trying to swing around to kill off this half track. The Fulcher Makers are going to lose the Zanista because they have the Flamer. And the Zanista, very I, I should I should reappraise again. This is a very good, this is a good unit. This is a this is a good CQC unit. Four Thompsons really put out some good damage. Along with that flamer. Here we go. We'll watch this go down pretty quick. I mean, the Fulcher is fanatical, so he won't surrender, but that doesn't mean this will go any better. The half track is staying out of range of the Pack 36 by continuing to drive across it, so it has to creep repositioning. Now, finally, the Flak 36 has Pack 36 has some space to fire. Does get off one shot. Fulcher gets pinned down. Kabir Jaegers move forward. 47 mil in position now to support. Half track does go down, so this cheese push is now gone. Panzer II coming in with his auto cannon, always fun. This MG42 went down to the fuselliers, really? Huh. Seems weird. Feels like something else must have happened there. Cromwell 5 will find this Panzer II unless the Pack 36 can save the day, but at this range I doubt it. Pack 36 is more magical for its heat round. Although its AP shell does okay and it did get a side shot just now. Let's see if we can get more of them. No, the Chromo 5 stops in the perfect spot, Incha knowing exactly what to do here. Panzer 2 doing some nice support work here, killing off some of those Z sticks. Killing those off means there's not really any other CQC to deal with other than the recon squad. CQC being really one of the only weaknesses of CIABG. You lack some 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 close range support. That's about it. Everything else about this division is kind of ridiculous. Fulcher Makers go down. Double SPW uh, 40, 41 coming in. Standard auto cannon car. Pack 40, 36 goes down, though. That's a big loss. Every time you lose one of these AT guns, he's going to have a harder and harder time dealing with all the Cromos spamming out. Flag barely being held here by Espresso, holding on to a 12 12 currently. I don't know Espresso off the top of my head. I, I have to assume he's a relatively competent player to even like stand up to Inshot here for a while. Uh, but I definitely don't think he's any sort of like division one. He's definitely no like division one player or something. I.e., meaning this matchup skill wise is quite imbalanced. Does take out one of the half tracks though with his AB. So he spammed out a whole bunch of AB 41s. Try to staunch some of the bleeding here. Amazing these guys don't have line of sight on each other. He is trying hard to get into this position on the hill here. Cromwell 6 takes a nice hit from the pack 38. Really wants to kill these off because the 2K HE is devastating for his division. He doesn't really have any way to deal with it. I mean, other than the planes. And looking at the situation here, there's no AA for Inshaw, actually, which is really surprising. Pack 38 pushing out way too much. It's going to die to the MG42 and Vickers here. That's going to be a huge loss. Yeah. Uh, I feel like Espresso is throwing away way too many of his AT guns here. Panzer 2 goes down to the Cromwell 5 that popped up. MG42 is apparently invincible. Finally, it goes down. Whole bunch of infantry here getting overwhelmed. Cromwell 5 falls back from the Gabir's Jaeger. This is Fulcher Jaeger can't hold off all these infantry. 
Pack 38 here on the hill. Oh, SPW goes down to the Cromwell 7 now there. Needs to run those SPWs away. Those are key to survival here. One of the strength of, of Unternemen are these piles of armored cars and stuff. Pack 38 is in APCR range of this Cromwell 7. Otherwise, it wouldn't have any chance of killing it. Does get a transmission damage and a penetration so far. But now it's bouncing. I, uh, unfortunate for that pack 38. Actually, they get a whole bunch of APCR shells on target, which is surprising. I mean, they're 150 millimeters of pen. They drop off quickly, though. So since it's at max range, that's likely why. Pack 38 did kill something off here. Not sure what it was. Cromwell 5 is still in, though. Pack 38 is trying to find a line on it. Cromwell, these Gavir Jagers haven't been spotted yet. This is a very ballsy transport route. He did just do fast travel, so it's not really his fault. It's just weird pathing. Pack 38 finds the Stuart. This Pack 38 gets more APCR on, gets a loader wounded on the Cromwell 7. Stuart has to fall back. Pack 36 trying to help out the cause here. This Cromwell will not die. Ugh, these need a price nerf. That, that's my opinion. These should be 70 or 75 points. There's a lot of armor here and not a lot of anti-armor. Pack 38 does take out one of the Cromwells, though. This Cromwell 6, lighter on the armor, so the Pack 38 should have a good chance if we can get a second shot on that'd be huge. Yep, and it does. Wow, taking out both those Cromwells, really nice there for him. Might give him a fighting chance here again on this hill. Panzer 2 goes down, though. Kind of shocked, but Incha is somehow managing to win infantry battles here, which really should be the strength of Russell Sprung. Cromwell 6, I mean, Churchill 6 now, and, and this thing, the 105 millimeters of armor, it's going to be a tough nut to crack. Something just missed. The Pack 36 rocket just mixed. That is unfortunate. You really needed that to land. Uh, the heat shell does go 750 meter range. Yeah, it was pretty, he, he needed that kind of bad. It's not surprising it missed. It, it does not have good accuracy. I mean, you can see here 30% and it was at max range. So like, it's not surprising, but it is very unfortunate. Now this pack 38 would be dangerous if it had any APCR left, but it does not. It does get a penetration though, up close like this, but the Churchill gonna pin it down and down it goes. Churchill with two machine guns, one of the few Commonwealth tanks that actually has two machine guns. It was technically designed as a support tank in the first place, so you, I would think it would have two machine guns. Falsham Yeagers find the Zanista, should be able to push them back, get that flag, but we're now into B phase, and uh, Espresso didn't make a lot of progress there. Double Falsham Yeager, though, should overwhelm the Zanista, and he shouldn't have any more CQC to really worry about. The issue, of course, is going to be the piles and piles and piles and piles of Cromwells. Beer Jaeger moving out into the middle of the field with no plans of going into the town, which is right here. AB41 here gets found by the Daimler. Going to go down. Big loss there. Beer Jaeger needs to keep moving. And for some reason, he's going far away. From, I, don't, I guess he doesn't know this tank's here, but he should have seen it with these infantry over here. So I'm not sure why he was running away. Pack 36 gets caught out. He's going to lose another AT gun. He is, he's running out of AT guns, to put it quite frankly. He's lost several Pack 36s. He's lost several Pack 38s. The only thing we haven't seen are Pack 40s, which are coming in B phase. JU87 coming in, but there is a Crusader AA here. And I don't even know what that was going for, to be honest with you. This is Cromwell 6, maybe? If Crusader AA kills this JU87, that's another massive loss. So this Spitfire is going to do it. So another key AT asset killed. It's 20 millimeter is a joke. Panzer II trying to save the day here with these infantry fights. He's just getting overwhelmed. Like there's just so many infantry because they all cost 15 stinking points. I'm not a fan of CIABG. I, I find this division to be obnoxious and spammy and. I, I still think needs to be nerfed more, but that's just me. 
That's that's my bias. That is my personal bias on that one. I do strongly feel Cromwell 7 should be more expensive. They should be 70 or 75 points. 155 millimeter. Already coming in. Big booms. Very effective RD piece. CIABG, absolutely not a slacker in the RD department. Very strong RD tab. Now the light armor pushing forward. The Fulcher Makers have no AT on them. Going to get overwhelmed. They won't get surrendered, but there's not much they can do. Pack 38 back here got killed. Little dinky Italian tanks ain't going to do much. I do have seven minutes. They can kill the Stewarts. They can do that. That's about it, though. Gabiric Strife. Some semi-automatic rifles and MG34. Unternehmen is a, is a division I also don't like at all for totally different reasons because I think it's like really bad and very difficult to use and very unfun. I would play this division if you want the game to be a struggle for you. If you want to put your game on hard mode, play this division. Because on several maps, you just can't possibly win. And even on maps where it's good, it still is like, mm. the only person I've ever seen this play this division really well was Kurz when he was in his heyday. And he somehow made this division work. I, I could never understand even watching many of his games with this, how he did it. Brandenburger in these guys are phenomenal. They are going to get buffed too in the coming patch with the commando trait. So they should be even more phenomenal. And you can see just how these 15-point infantry can just overwhelm higher-cost infantry. Although, SS Gabir Jager, 20 points, not much more expensive. So down south, making progress here. Not the area I would expect Espresso to make progress, honestly, because this is open. This is where the Cromwells and stuff should be able, the HE tanks should be able to absolutely dominate. Incha not really doing that, though, choosing to fight in the tighter quarters up north. Panzer Shrek does get it in position. Pack 40 missing its APCR shot. Does take out the Churchill 6, so nice kill there. Panzer Shrek goes down. No, wait, it's over here, maybe. Maybe it survived. It looks like it did. Beer Strife falling back. Beer, yeah, and this is what I'm talking about. Like, what, what is he going to do against this thing? LG42 in, black 20 mil. Espresso making some daring pushes across the open, especially with so much armor around him. Surprised he's deciding to be so aggressive with it. All he needs to do though is kill off this Fusilier and this flag is his. Finally gets it. That flag flits. We're back to 12-12. Brandenburger takes a big hit from Artie? No, there's a Cromwell over here. There's some sort there. Cromwell 8 all the way over here. on the. I've never even seen someone use this position like this. Very interesting. Always nice to see what these top players do because they just, they have these positions and stuff like I would never, I never used them. I'm just like, oh, that's a pretty wonderful spot. Already now coming down in the center of the town to loosen up these infantry a bit. Shake their marbles around. Get them to get out of position. Cromwell 7 continues to just be a brick wall. Really, the only things around to kill it are the Pack 40 or the AT planes. And of course, the AT planes are a big ask. Pack 40 is in, though. Does get a hit on the Cromwell 7, but another Cromwell 6 is now in with its 2K HE. So that Pack 40, probably not long for this world. And this is the issue. Like, you, what do you do against this in this division? You need a plane, but the opponent is AA. So now what do you do? The answer is nothing. There, there's nothing you can do. You're just kind of completely boned. Why I do not like this division in any way. It's so easy to counter. And obviously this was a random tournament. So like, but this is the, exactly the reason I'm not playing in this tournament because I don't, I can just go into quick play and play random matches if I want to. And I can at least choose what I'm stuck playing randomly with. In this, I don't even get to choose what I'm randomly playing. So you end up with these extremely lopsided matches where it's just like, what was Espresso really supposed to do?
especially against a top tier player like Insha. And this is how I expected the South to go. Just a couple 2K Cromwells just chilling out, blocking off the entire area. The fact that he got in here at all is quite impressive. I don't know why. Yeah, okay, so he's going over here now. That That's the right choice. So there's just a, there's a crap ton of stuff here. SPW going to go instantly down to the Stuart and AA, Crusader AA here. Ooh, SPW taking out the Crusader AA. Okay. All right. 100% Earth losing that. Now bring in the planes. Bring in the planes. We now have the 182 millimeter artillery here. Can we get in to see this thing? Excuse me, trees. There it is. Shoot. Bang. Boom. Okay, fine. I lost interest. And there we go. Um, Yeah, no artillery yet out of espresso. He is pouring in here to fight. We do have a leader, so that'll help. Is Brandenburg going to die to all these Cromwells? As is Gabir's fear getting caught out as well. LG42 getting hit by the artillery. One of the only 2K assets in this division. He's got to get these leaders into the woods here. This is, yeah, there we go. Italian light tanks doing some work here in the center. Nope, just kidding. They're dying. The double 20 mil scaring off the Spitfire. But they're getting hit by artillery. The big guns starting to show their effect. Wow, M15 taking out the Stuart. Nice kill there. The push is happening here as well. Panzer Shrek going to take out one of the L640s here, which is the autocannon tank, which is probably the one he wants alive most because it can really chop down some infantry. Now the Stuart coming in. Here comes a Cromwell 5 as well. That's going to be an issue. Panzer Shrek does go down, though. Brandenburger trying to move forward. The Stuart doesn't put down that much machine gun fire. Wait, yes, it does. Just kidding. It has three machine guns. <laughs> oh, attack power. You hilarious fool, you. The Gabir Jaeger AT gun, though. AT rifle here is the really good one that the sick rings use, so it should be able to kill this. If it's in range, it should be in range. There we go. Gets a shooter knockout. L640 goes down again to the Cromwell now. And the leader, Stuart, gets away. Really unfortunate. Really, it probably should have been able to pen. Things in town not going much better. He's now lost. He just has snipers here and a whole lot of support weapons are here and now it looks like insha gearing up for a push up north as well there's no at guns here now to stop and he's swinging up around as well panzer shrek's coming in this time he brought a b phase card so he does have eight of them machine gun does go down already hitting the pack 40 his precious at guns Panzer Shrek coming in should be able to take out the Stuart leader here. As long as it's not spotted beforehand and Insha doesn't have time to react. He does not, so down that'll go. Now if the Panzer Shrek can swing around here and kill this Cromwell, that would be massive. He is trying. He's got to hop two more buildings, but he's getting spotted. Oh, and the, sure, the Panzer Shrek goes down. The push up north has begun. There's nothing to stop this armor. Infantry moving in. And he now has recon on the hill here. Oh, no. The flak verling. Oh, no. He's going to lose his expensive AA piece. There is a pack 36 in a dumb position. It must have fallen back at some point. He could certainly move up and get a rocket on that thing, but the Spitfires have spotted it, so it's not like it's a surprise. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, that's so hard to see. I know the pain so well. We all do. Everyone who's played this game knows that pain. It's one thing for infantry to die in a transport. That already hurts enough, but for an expensive support weapon or something to die. Oh, just get dealing with some indigestion there. Recon spotting out. This Panzer Shrek again. Oh, now he's going to lose this Panzer Shrek and he's got no armored protection here. Oh, he does actually spot it in time. 
His push here has, was successful, but losing that Panda Shark was a big deal. It's Cromo 5, as long as Incha micros it, which he will, uh, is going to be a tough thing to get to. Beard Fusilier trying to help the cause with its sniper. And we're into C phase. Espresso doing a nice job of holding himself against these very problematic units. Pack 36 on the run now from the Bojova Hidilka. Panther Shrek on a move order again, completely not killing this Modus Jealousy, which will now get into the woods. Yeah, not a big fan of that. You should just always attack move, honestly. There's very few situations, unless you're trying to get into a building or something, where you should just be moving. Because then stuff like that happens. You miss a huge opportunity. And now the Panther Shrek's going to die anyway. Oh, no. I mean, he gets the half track, but now, uh, wow, he actually gets away. I mean, not that it's going to make a big difference here. There's nothing to stop this. I mean, here comes some Brandenburger Pios, which m definitely are strong. Oh, the Pioneer gets the grenade off. Okay. Panther Shrek needs to keep running away, honestly. But that attack force there is too massive. And now another huge force coming in with the support of artillery. You know, really hard to stop that. And once Inchuk cuts off this reinforcement road, I'm not sure where he goes from there. Daimler misses its first shot on the Brandenburg. Misses the second one as well. Whew. Will the Pioneers get into position in time, though? Brandenburgers getting caught in the transport need to unload immediately. They do. Brandenburgers even out of cover there. Triple Star might be able to put down some damage. 47 mil kills off the Cromwell. Okay. All right. I see you. I see you doing the work. Can't kill that Cromwell 8, though. 47 mil now after the Daimler. Oh, no, it doesn't get a chance. The recon tank takes it out. Brandenburger Pios into the woods. They did make it, but now the other Brandenburg is caught out. 35-point infantry unit is going to get just chopped down here and things crumbling right now for Espresso. Things in the center stable for now, but here comes the Disheartened RAF, converted RAF, pouring in. Here comes the Panzer Shrek to try to finally take out these Cromos, which have been bullying him mercilessly. Like a high school jock picking on a nerd in the 70s. Nerds are cool now, so it's fine. A Panzer Shrek is not going to solve his problems here. Might stop these Cromos from driving directly to the spawn point. And these aren't even tank Cromos, they're just HE. Oh, God. Oh, I hate this division so much. <laughs> I really hate it. Oh. Oh, no. Now, they shouldn't be able to see oh, the Panzer Shrek trying to get off the road. And now Inshaw's saying, nah, it's, I'm good. <laughs> he's saying he's done. He's not pulling a Stan the man and driving straight to the spawn point, which is exactly what Stan would do. But Espresso's defense is here crumbling quickly. There's just not much for his division to do, honestly. And especially against a player like Insha, it's not like he's making mistakes. And uh, Espresso is a little too willing to like walk his troops out into the middle of a, play a field with nowhere to go. Brandenburgers do unload in time, but they're going to get hit hard by the triple machine gun of the Stuart. Churchill 7 goes down to the pack 40. Really nice there. One Brandenburger does get in, forces a flag capture there, holding back to that 12-12. I mean, credit to him for holding on for dear life. He really is. Pack 40 coming in here now to try to solve this problem, but I'm not sure if it's solvable. Do finally see some arty. Going to go for the counter battery. Finally deciding these 155s, these big guns he's had enough of. Probably, I mean, I, I doubt he had the points lying around to do it earlier, but he really probably should have done it earlier. Oh, and the Brandenburger Pio's getting caught out. He hasn't noticed. Oh, they could be so dangerous still, but they're going to die to this thing. Oof. 20 mil tickling some Spitfires. Tickle, 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 tickle. 
Gabir Jagerfier holding that flag or uh old Insha, he's calling himself old Insha. Insha still holding that 1311 though. And the counter battery absolutely immediately devastating. 105 needs to be unloaded further from the road. He's going to lose some troops and transports that way. Brandenburg did notice, but now the converted gunner is going to finish him off. So down that goes. And just so many. And that's the thing with CIABG. Even when you play it on a Maverick income or something, because it's infantry are all 15 points, you can keep calling in five or six infantry every tick anyway. So you, I don't feel like you ever feel the strain of your income in this division because everything's so dirt freaking cheap. And I don't feel like those infantry perform at 15 points. I feel like they outperform that quite significantly, especially because you're usually calling in two to three for every one the opponent calls in. 20 mil tickle. <laughs> hey, get out of here. I don't like you flying above me. Go away. <laughs> it didn't do anything. He fired a full burst. And it barely cost any suppression. Oh my gosh. Why are they so bad? <laughs> they do eventually kill things, but like they are so bad at stopping planes. <laughs> oh, I can't. I just can't. Oh. Oh my goodness. Wow, oh my God. The Cromwell HE spam is just so much. He repositioned all these over here. There's absolutely nothing in Untenemen that can stand up to three HE Cromwells. A plane. That's it. The only chance he'd have is, is a JU 87 like tank buster, which we haven't even seen. And the Spitfire's in the air anyway, and it would shoot it down. And Inshaw's actually being quite ballsy not having like a Crusader AA nearby. Usually what you do is move this this squad of tanks along with a Crusader AA, and then there's really nothing that can be done. Here comes a JU-87 to try to do what I was talking about, but it's the cluster one, so it's going to lose line of sight. He's, he's targeting behind it. Nice play there. Inch of those spreading out left and right. And the JU-87 hits absolutely nothing. Yeah, that was the issue. Now that Spitfire is going to swing right back around, this thing's super maneuverable, going to take out that JU-87, and down goes another one of those precious pieces of AT that actually haven't killed a single tank. Ugh. This is a pretty horrendous divisional mismatch. Three big guns now. Although to the credit of the 105s, they did for the for how little time they were in, they did do some good damage. These check guns are actually pretty phenomenal, firing eight rounds a minute. And now the overwhelming force here on the hill pushing espresso off along in conjunction with the artillery espresso is like everything on return fires so that inch is forced to get all the way up and close and personal panzer check getting spotted it's not even gonna get to kill the cromwell five it so desperately wanted to kill oh man oh that's so hard to watch pack 40 is shooting the infantry which is allowing the cromwell eight to shoot it oof Oof, oof. 16-8 now for Insha. Yeah. I, I can't say this result is shocking. This 105 still doing a really nice job. I this this result is not shocking. I mean, this division, this this matchup is so so heavy weighted to CIABG. It's kind of ridiculous. And there's I mean, honestly, there's not a lot of divisions that Unternemen matches up well against. I mean, third VDV, maybe. Maybe not, though. Uh in terms of allied division, it have to be some allied division with like no tanks, basically. Maybe 358th. Uh, and also, like, it has to be extremely map dependent as well. Like, you can't be on a map with like any open ground at all. And Espresso throws in the towel very understandably. 31 minutes, 44 seconds there. 35, 55 to 17, 65. A rough game to be sure, but also, I mean, it's it's random division, so it's not like he actually picked the wrong division, but it shows you how important a division matchup can be. 
Uh, even a great player can can lose if a division matchup is bad enough. It can just be really tough. But if you guys enjoyed that, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and consider supporting over on Patreon. Thanks a bunch, and have a fantastic day.